good we can take a quick look if we got it right okay it's there now we can compile the rest of the toolset After configure script has finished, we have to get back to our root folder and then compile uh, the inodb tools. At this point, we have a page parser compiled as well as constraints parser, which would look for data from a table like the address table we defined earlier. Let's first use page parser to split table space into smaller chunks so we do not have to work with one big file having all data in it. You would not have to do that for IBD file when running with inodb file per table for the obvious reason it would only contain data from that one table you're recovering. In the command line, minus 5 denotes the version of MySQL we are working with, or rather inodb table format, which could be minus 4 for redundant which was used in MySQL version 4, or minus 5 for compact which is used in, in this version of MySQL we're using. Okay, let's run it. An outcome we get from page parser is pages dash timestamp folder having pages split by index ID. And pages we're looking for are primary key pages since inodb stores data in primary key pages. Now, if the table was not dropped, we could well use inodb table monitor to get that information. I'll just quickly show you how this would work for some other table. Let's say we want to get that information for table actor. Uh, we would create an IndB table monitor. Basically, we have to wait a little uh, for inodb to dump the data we want into the log file. Let's quit MySQL and see if it has dumped it. Okay, the information is there. So let's, for example, take table Sakila actor. There it is. What we're looking for is the index primary. There it is. There's the line with index primary. And there's the ID 0 which is low number of the ID, and 15, which is high number of uh, the index ID. So if we would look for a table actor, we would have to go to the folder 0-15. Anyway, in this case, the table isn't there anymore. So what helps in this case is knowing something about the data so we could search for it. For example, I remember one of the addresses had a work, work haven in it. You could search for things like that in backups, for example. Let's try to find those pages with the work board haven. So the folder is pages, then there's a timestamp, as you see. And I just search for it. So the data is still there. And that's the folder we'll be working with. Let's concatenate these pages into one file again. You want to make sure pages are sorted so that newer data ends up being in the end. I will show you why this is important later in this tutorial.
Now let's run constraints parser with table definition file generated automatically. You'll notice that our data is there, but if you take a better look, there's also a lot of garbage. For example, these rows are not something we are looking for. Then there's also a lot of rows with ID 0. That's where the filters come into play, and filters are a very important part of the recovery process. You'll see why in a minute. First, let's try to eliminate rows with ID equals zero, because we don't actually have those. There's address ID definition, and that's the filter. And min minimal value would be one in our case. Let's save it recompile it and we can run constraints parser again now there's less garbage but still first few uh, rows look incorrect and also if you look below there's no row number 9 number 10 this is actually a little bit tricky and if you don't know your data very well you really have to spend some time guessing. So it really helps to know your data better. The point here is to set as narrow filters as possible, so offsets with non-matching data are skipped. For example, I know that maximum address ID is somewhere around 1000. Also, I know that there are no empty addresses. Actually, knowing shortest street name is 9 chars is really, really helpful. So let's open up the definition file again. Let's look at uh, address ID definition. We want to set it to 1000 here. And we also want, want to find address column, which is below down here. And also in the limit section, we want to set it to nine characters. Let's compile it again and run constraints parser. Looks good. Let's see. Yeah, so there's row number nine, number 10, number 11, and so on. And there are no zero columns in the bottom. Now let's send it to the text file. There are a couple more things. You might remember in the beginning.